Hey, space fans, Tarek Mel. Editor in chief of space.com, days away from the an historic launch of the Artemis One mission to the moon. Now, this is NASA's big uh, vanguard, their first ever mission of the Artemis programs. This is supposed to be the the kickoff to returning astronauts to the moon in uh, in 2025. And so, I, I thought it'd be a good time now that we're uh, as of we're speaking now about three days out, launch minus three. They call it L minus three here to. Uh, just you know, take take stock, let you know what's going on, give you an idea of where we are. It's actually uh, a nice day right now, not too hot and not too cold, but about 20 minutes ago, it was pouring, pouring rain, and I did step in a giant puddle. But luckily, that's not happening right now, and hopefully, it won't happen on launch day. So uh, just to kind of give you a, a quick look, uh, again, this is for the Artemis 1 launch. NASA, for this mission, is launching the Space Launch System. That's their new giant mega rocket uh, to uh, around the moon. It's carrying the Orion space capsule. That's NASA's next generation spacecraft for astronauts. Uh, it is a capsule, it is not reusable like the space shuttle, uh, but it it, uh, it won't be carrying a crew on this flight. It will be carrying a mannequin called Campos and some of these creepy torso uh, torsos covered in radiation sensors, and then a lot of other science experiments to see what astronauts will actually feel like on the way to the moon. And the goal, if all goes well, is to show that the system is ready to carry astronauts uh, so that the next mission, Artemis II, which is supposed to launch in 2024, will get those astronauts to the moon. So really quickly, just before we talk a little bit at the uh, about the mission, and um, and I wanted to give you a, a look around. And so I am here at um, at the, the Kennedy Space Center press site, and I can give you a quick little tour of, uh, of of where we are now. This is this is the 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 NASA News Center. Uh, this is where all of the press are going to be. They're expecting hundreds of reporters. Uh, but I think what you really want to see is this stuff right behind me. Now there's NASA's giant vehicle assembly building. That's where they built the uh, the uh, Artemis uh, one moon rocket, the um, space launch system. It's also where they built the Saturn V rocket, and they built this building for the Saturn V to launch the Apollo astronauts to the moon back in the 60s so very historic building that you can see in the corner right over there it does say uh, artemis there they're getting all ready for the moon that kind of squat building with the uh stairwells on the outside that's the launch control center that's where everyone will be to actually push the buttons to ignite uh, the engines to send the rocket to the moon and then right uh, over here across the parking lot so i'm going to point at it with my fingers uh is the actual rocket itself so the it's 22 feet tall. You can see there's these two lines on either side of it. Those are the actual uh, uh, solid rocket boosters. They will uh, detach during launch. And at the top, there's a little white column. That's the actual Artemis, uh, the Orion space capsule, and its upper stage. And that's the part that's going to go to the moon and, and come back. Come back around here. They hit the big digital countdown clock is right over here that says Artemis. And it, during launch day, they'll have their, their countdown. The clock actually will start counting down tomorrow. So we'll see the digital score there. And behind that, you might see an American flag and a lot of cranes in the distance. That's SpaceX's launch pad 39A. That's where they launch uh, crew uh, missions to the Interna International Space Station for NASA on uh, Falcon 9s. Those launch from the little black structure right there. Um, and, uh, and then behind it is a towering structure. That's where they want to launch their um their starship rocket from <clears throat> and then there's just i wanted to show everyone this really nice mural of the history of space exploration that, that have launched from here of course the saturn V is right there in the middle but you've got uh ed white over here on his spacewalk uh the voyager record uh here here's the vab and the space shuttle uh era and off on the side is the apollo era of course and uh kennedy there's a little newspaper kind of thing there, and it's the final shuttle mission there that I was able to see, STS-135. And there's actually a, a little bit of history on this mission because one of the boosters, and I'm going to switch the camera around right now, one of the booster segments on the solid rocket boosters on this flight is, in fact, uh, a segment from that last, that last space shuttle mission. So, so there's, there's, they're reusing a lot of shuttle hardware for this mission. Uh, and in the future Artemis flights, they're going to use brand new ones uh, to to keep things going. So, uh, kind of a lot of a lot of tests going on. You know, can they reuse this old hardware for a new mission to go to the moon? Can they then adapt that 
uh, with brand new vehicles uh, to continue that sustainable exploration of the moon and hopefully lead on to Mars. So this mission, Artemis 1, will launch on Monday at 8.33 in the morning. So if you're a, a morning person, it's a pretty good time for you. Uh, if not, I'm sorry, you'll have to wake up early. But they do have a two hour window uh, in which to try to launch that flight. Uh, and then uh, if they can't go on Monday, their backup date is Friday on September 2nd. That uh, it gets a little bit later in the day, around like lunchtime for that mission. And it'll get even later in the day uh, if they miss that opportunity and they have to go on Monday, September 5th. They're expecting 100,000 people to come here in the Florida area around me to, uh, to witness, <clears throat> witness the launch all along the beaches here, uh, just to see a little bit of history if they, as, they, as they get off the ground. So that's kind of the, the stage that's set. NASA's pretty excited. I mean, it's, it's hot here. It's August in, in Florida. They have these fun little fans that they're giving out to folks. You can see they, they're comparing uh, SLS and the space shuttle and the, the Saturn V there. Uh, it's very welcome because of the heat here. And, uh, and another way to beat the heat, they've, they've, they've been handing out these Artemis hats as well. Uh, I've got my space dock hat pretty attached to it right now, but uh, that's just kind of one way that they're trying to get people excited uh, for the mission there. I know Mary uh, uh, Dominguez, my uh, my my ever um, ever faithful partner, is is uh, on the back end running the stream, and uh, and she has some questions that I, I can I can answer from folks that, yeah. that sent some in earlier. But uh, that's kind of the the stage right now. Uh, three days out, there's a 70% chance of good weather, and we're they're they're tracking these clouds. You can see there's a lot of clouds here. They don't like the clouds uh, for the the rocket to fly through. Uh, they don't want it to fly through rain too that is a, a worry and then they're thinking that there might be some lightning during launch day <clears throat> not so much at the pad but it could create a charged environment on the ground that they're not that happy about so they're keeping an eye on those uh, kind of three factors uh, but right now 70 percent chance of good weather is a pretty good chance so we're keeping our fingers crossed and mary i think with that if there's some questions that we can talk about the mission i'm i'm here and, and i'm ready yeah, so I'll start with um, just a couple of general questions from Facebook. Um, this is not from one particular person, but one that I saw a lot in general, which is, uh, what are the biggest differences between the Artemis 1 space launch system and Saturn V? Well, one of the, the, the biggest differences is the power. NASA has been building the space launch system as its most powerful rocket ever, and it, it is. It can create 8.8 uh, .8 million pounds of thrust uh, during takeoff. That's actually more than the, the Saturn V, which was 7.5 million. And this version is actually just the first, NASA calls them blocks. Uh, this is the block one version of the SLS, and they are planning to build a, a larger one uh, called the block uh, 1B, and that one will be even more powerful. It, it'll have uh, upgraded, uh, an upgraded upper stage that can carry bigger things to space. They need that because they want to build a space station around the moon. Uh, and so those are the, the, primary, the primary things. It's, it's more powerful. The other thing is it's built to carry more people. The Orion spacecraft is built to carry at least four people and all the stuff they need to go to the moon. Apollo was, uh, was designed to carry three. The Orion spacecraft is 30% larger than uh, than the the Apollo spacecraft on the Saturn V, uh, and uh, and it's supposed to travel a lot longer. Those er those early Apollo missions weren't too weren't too long, about ten days or, or so to the moon and back. Uh, this mission is supposed to last forty two days, and that's twice as long as a normal Orion mission. Uh, but they they do need to make sure that all of the the power to get the the rocket there to get the the spacecraft there on that long trip uh, is working properly. So a lot of things kind of going on this one also has uh the as i mentioned earlier the the solid rocket boosters on the side now the saturn V did not have those uh, it had just a um, a series of, of liquid fueled uh, engines all the way up uh all the way up on its multiple stages so that's th those are the, the the big differences that you'll see uh for this one so there's fewer stages on the saturn on the space launch system than there were on the saturn V, uh, but they are more powerful Okay, um, that is a great answer. And uh, okay, next question is from Alicia uh, Alicia Stott on Facebook, and she's asked, um, why not send a lunar rover to the moon that's similar to one of the Mars rovers that we've sent there? Alicia, that's a really good question. In fact, NASA is planning on sending a lot of different kinds of rovers to the moon 
uh, and not just uh, once astronauts get there. Now, I mentioned before that Artemis 1 is uncrewed. Uh, Artemis 2, the one in 2024, is going to send people around the moon. Uh, Artemis 3, that's the moon landing. That's going to land uh, two astronauts on the moon uh, at, the, at the lunar south pole. But in between all of those missions, NASA has a series of of robotic missions that are, are going to be launching with many of them are built by private companies. Some of them are built by actual NASA centers. Uh, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory is building the Viper moon rover. It's going to go look for ice at the uh, the south pole of the moon. Meanwhile, there's other companies like Astrobotic who are building uh, just commercial landers and flying experiments that NASA has built uh, on those landers and rovers that are going to be uh, driving around in different parts of the moon over the next five or, or six years. So basically between now and when astronauts are walking on, on the moon, we're gonna have three or four different types of rovers that NASA is hoping to, uh, to land there. And, uh, and they will be flying on different vehicles. So some of them are launching on Saturn V rocket, or pardon me, Falcon 9 rockets from SpaceX. Others are being launched by private companies like Firefly. They're gonna la uh, launch a, a rover as well. And, and then you have ones that are launching uh, on SLS uh, when, uh, when, they, when they get to that point. The ones that might launch on SLS are very, very big. NASA is talking about building a, uh, a, a lunar rover for astronauts uh, that will they'll be able to drive it on the moon when they're there. But when they're not there, flight controllers on Earth and mission control can take control of it as well and drive it around and use it to do experiments or to explore different parts of the moon remotely. So they'll get a lot more of the roving done even when the astronauts aren't there. And then when they come back for another mission, they can you know, you know, just get in the car and, and, and drive around again. They're planning, they're working with J the J uh, Japan Space Agency, J uh, JAXA, to build a pressurized uh, rover, a big truck that you can go inside and drive around on the moon for two weeks at a time. Uh, so there's, there's all these different types of rovers that NASA is exploring both commercially and with their international and uh, commercial partners. Cool, well explained. We have another question. Um, I just found this on a an Artemis story that we posted on the space.com Facebook, and it is from Patrick McNabb. Uh, the question is, will SLS clear the tower, <laughs> and what would happen if it didn't? Well, that, that's a really good question, Patrick. So, so you know, clearing the tower uh, is, is a big milestone for any mission. It means it's on its way, and NASA really hopes that it will. So does Boeing, which is the primary contractor for the rocket's core stage. That's the, uh, when I showed the rocket a little bit earlier, that's the, the big orange section uh, in the center. The, uh, the, uh, once it clears the, the, the tower, then the folks in the Launch Control Center hand off control to the Johnson Space Center when there's astronauts on board. And they will take control and, uh, and just monitor its systems all the way there. Now, NASA is prepared for an emergency. Uh, if there are astronauts on board and it, there is an issue where it doesn't clear the tower, there's a launch abort system at the top. That's a, a little network of motors of towers that are uh, connected to its, its shell that will pull the Orion capsule free and, uh, and take the astronauts to safety. We've seen that in action a few years ago. Uh, a NASA astronaut and a Russian cosmonaut had to use that same uh, type of system on their Soyuz rocket in order to, uh, to take it to, uh, to safety. So they're hoping not to have to use something like that. If the rocket does have an anomaly. Uh, everyone here does have to shelter in place. That building that I just showed you behind me, uh, uh, behind the camera, the NASA New Center is the primary shelter uh, for that. There is a lot of toxic uh, chemicals on there. And it's, as I mentioned, uh, uh, it's 8.8 uh, it's .8 million pounds of thrust, 730,000 gallons of propellant. Uh, that's a lot. <laughs> so that they have to prepare for it. So they're hoping that that does not happen uh, because if it is, it would cause massive damage to the pad. Of course, they'd lose the rocket and the mission, and they might have to have an investigation, they would, to see what happened uh, and, uh, and go back and fix it. Thank My money is answering. yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is, <laughs> I, want that, I want to see it launch. Um, and uh, the last question I have here is kind of in the same cheeky uh, manner, but it's from Dave Vanderpool on Facebook, um, on a, again, on another space.com article, which was um, about Jeff Bezos is launching uh, a Blue Origin mission on August 31st. Jen, is, is Jeff Bezos trying to one up NASA's Artemis <laughs> SLS slash lunar mission launch on the 29th? 
that 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 is that is that is a, a funny coincidence. Uh, right now, I don't think so. Jeff Bezos' uh, launch on the the thirty first with Blue Origin is actually an an, uh, an uncrewed uh, suborbital launch. It's not going as high. Uh, it is just going to go uh, about uh, sixty two miles up or so, uh, and then it'll it'll come back down. There'll be a few minutes of weightlessness, and uh, and then it'll come back. It has a lot of experiments. Some of them are for NASA actually because they they are a provider of flights for these uncrewed missions. They also fly tourists to space, which they've done a few times over the last uh, the last uh, year or so. And so I don't think they're trying to one-up them. They will launch when they're ready to launch uh, and when they get the regulations, the permits uh, to do that. Um, you know, we just, we just, I just showed you the, the launch pad uh, over here uh, that SpaceX is using. Uh, a short distance behind and, and uh, behind the camera is the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And there's a, a whole other set of launch pads there where SpaceX, actually tomorrow night, as we're speaking, is going to launch their own uh, uh, Falcon 9 rocket on Starlink, too. So uh, you kind of have the, the billionaire space companies bookending this launch if they're able to get off on time. Uh, and it's pretty uh, a pretty exciting. Also, the launch is from Texas, so it's not here. Uh, the SpaceX launch is is just from a few miles a few miles away. Okay, so follow up question: um, Is SpaceX trying to launch? Just kidding. Um, that's <laughs> all. <laughs> that's all of the questions that I have for now. Um, I think this. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I, I think th those are all really great questions. I, I hope that uh, uh, you, the the viewers, and the space.com readers uh, have more questions that you want to know about. I'm here. To answer them, hopefully, if we can make this work, we'll we'll be uh, here at least once a day in the last few days leading up to launch. Uh, tomorrow, uh, just to give you an idea of what's coming up next. So today, as we're speaking, is Friday, the 26th. That's launch minus three, L minus three. Tomorrow, L minus two. NASA it will have a a press conference, uh, like their their last launch uh, launch uh, review a briefing, where they're going to outline what their strategy is. Are they going to go for all three days? Uh, are they going to skip a backup day for any reason? They're going to outline all of that. They'll let us know what how uh, what's the what status the vehicle is in, uh, what the latest weather uh, forecast is, and and what the outlook looks like for success. There'll be some other some other briefings, and uh, a lot of dignitaries are here. Uh, and then of course on um, on Sunday, there's one last checkup. Uh, that day before launch, will NASA will have a countdown update. The countdown does begin on Saturday morning. That's when folks will come behind me to this launch control center. Uh, start working their 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 round the clock shifts to get everything ready ready to go, uh, and then uh, of course uh, the big day is Monday August 29th. NASA will start uh, a, a broadcast at midnight on Monday actually, and I'll be here for that. It's going to be cracking on, um, but they'll they'll start a they'll start a broadcast then to start fueling the rocket, and that's when things will kick off in earnest. At 6:30 in the morning on Monday is the actual broadcast that they're gonna. Uh, start a uh, live commentary from it. We'll, we'll be looking forward to that. That's a, a, you know where they're really committed to the launch. And then 8.33 is when the two-hour launch window opens. Uh, they could not launch at 8.33 and decide to target some other part of that window because of weather, like I've been talking about here, or uh, another glitch or something like that that they want to work through. So don't be surprised if they don't launch exactly at 8.33. They could move that target uh, a few times in that window before they have to make a decision uh, to call it off. So let's hope uh, that that they they've got all their, their ducks in a row and that the vehicle is behaving, and we'll be able to see something pretty special on Monday. And we hope to see you there.